Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at approximations of distributions, essentially approximating one distribution with another distribution, usually the normal distribution. So in this instance I'm actually going to be very quick with it because I've just done some couple of other videos where I go into more detail, so this one will actually be quite brief. In an opinion poll, each individual in a sample of 275 people from a large population, okay, that's a large sample, okay, is asked which political parties they support. Uh, if 55%, uh, sorry, 45% of the population support party A, calculate approximately that pr the probability uh, that at least at least 116 of the sample will support A. Okay, so this is a binomial one essentially, binomial distribution. So the sample size here is 275 and the probability of a success is 0 0.45. And what we're asked to find out is the probability of X, the number of people being greater than at least 116, okay? So X is the number of people who support this party, okay? Out of the sample of 275. So, just as a remark, uh, a key thing to remember here is the continuity correction tables, or the con correction factors, okay? So in this instance, what we are going to do here is use this one at the bottom. So this, this is a lot of practice with the continuity correction factor. When you work, go from a discrete distribution, such as the binomial, to what we're about to do, uh, use the uh, normal distribution to approximate it, we should use a continuity correction factor. Just as a remark, so this is used for discrete to uh, binomial, uh, discrete to continuous, so binomial to normal, okay? If it was continuous to continuous in some instances, not impossible, but you would not actually have to do a correction factor. So this is for discrete to continuous, okay? Which is binomial to normal. So, in this instance, what we have is the probability of x greater than or equal to 16. So, the probability of x greater than or equal to 16, when we're talking about the binomial distribution, essentially that becomes the probability of x being greater than or equal to 115.5 when we look at it from the point of view of a normal distribution. Okay? So, let x denote the number of, uh, in the sample who support party A. Okay, I've just got a little bit of, I wrote over it there, but there you go, support party A, so clearly binomial. So uh, X equals, binomial. So, so X is distributed as binomial, uh, 275 as the sample size, number of trials, and P, the probability of success in each trial is 0 0.45. So to calculate the mean and the variance, which we're going to need, we use NP, okay, 275 times 0 0.45, which gives us 123.75 and then the variance which is n times p times 1 minus p okay which is 275 times 0 0.45 times 0 0.55 which gives us 68.0625 um, I'm going to stick with the decimal places as much as I can but you know feel free to be a little bit you know sort of choose your own sort of regime for decimal places here your answer should be close to mine but not exactly like mine okay uh the normal approximation to the binomial gives using the follow using the continuity correction factor okay that's something we sort of established already just as a remark just uh put in stuff about the central limit theorem large samples a little bit of theory a justification just to justify this approximation here okay and it's basically based on the uh, uh, fact that it's a very large sample 275 okay so yeah I'm gonna sort of sp sp skip past that and try and finish this video quickly essentially what we have there it is uh, we're going to set it up with specify X as a normal distribution with mean 123.75 and then a standard deviation of the square root of 68.0265 so 
0.0625. So this is mu. This is sigma squared. And hence, we have sigma here. Okay. Square root of that. So essentially, this resolves into a z-score calculation. Okay. If you're not familiar with z-scores and all that sort of stuff, I suggest you deal with that first and come back to that. But essentially, we should end up with probability of a Z being greater than 115.5 minus 123.75 divided by the square root of 68.0625. And it should get an answer of a Z score of close to minus 1, probability of Z being greater than minus 1, which is 1 minus 5, time, uh, 5 of minus 1. You should get an answer there close to 0 0.841. So that's it, really. So the key thing there, really binomial uh, setting up the binomial mean and the binomial variance and getting the equivalent normal mean and normal variance and of course these continuity correction factors okay so i think that's it really okay we'll leave it there